75% of the kids who graduate high school in Illinois go to schools that are so underfunded that they need remedial education before they can go to community college or university. You think about the people who voted for Trump in downstate Illinois, and, and Trump took some counties, 50%, 60%, 70%, 75%, some communities by higher margins than that. People in those communities, they feel as though the promise of our country isn't being kept that somehow their kids can't make it. They may not make it either. The wealth that they've created and amassed, maybe their house will be lost. But more important to them is their kids and this notion that the American dream, the idea that anybody can make it, the notion of rugged individualism is slipping out of their grasp. You wonder why do they feel like that? My belief is if you want to know where the Trump voter came from in Illinois, that Trump voter came from Illinois public schools, a high school that's underfunded, an education that's inadequate to participate in the modern American economy. And that feeling, that real feeling that they are being left behind is true. So what do we need to do? We need to grow our economy. We need better jobs. We need more jobs. And those jobs come, as I've described, from highly educated kids. So it's a big circle. So if every Democrat knows that, and most of them understand that correlation. Why didn't we move to a progressive income tax or any kind of state tax to help pay for our schools? When the Democrats controlled a supermajority in the House, a supermajority in the Senate, and the governor's mansion, why didn't we do that? That's the, that's the question of this race. I think we didn't do it because a handful of elected officials make money in side jobs as property tax appeals lawyers. They're making money on this system. And if we migrated to an income tax system where they can't make money, then their personal income would decline so they have a conflict of interest. They can't possibly be free to make the right decisions to allow the state to do the things it needs to do in order to be successful. The, the scope, the magnitude of it all is really impressive. So, uh, the Sears Tower sold for a billion, two hundred million dollars. Joe Berrios, the Cook County Assessor, says, oh no, I have alternative facts. It's only worth five hundred and seventy-nine million dollars. That means six hundred million dollars of value just disappears. That six hundred million dollars should have paid five percent in real estate taxes. That's thirty million dollars. 300 North LaSalle sold for over $840, $850 million. Joe Barrio says it's worth somewhere in the 300 millions. So there's $400 million of missing value there. 5% of 400 million is 20 million. In those two buildings, there's $50 million a year in missing tax revenue. That's a million dollars award for Chicago. Million dollars it's not going into education, million dollars it's not going into community policing from just two buildings. The only way to fix that system is to pay for the schools at the state level and not through local property taxes. J.B. Pritzker has been brought in to protect Mike Madigan, Joe Barrio's property tax racket. That's the fundamental issue. He'll never change the system. If we don't change the system, if we don't abandon the politics of hypocrisy, then we'll never fix the economy that we need to fix that'll allow us and our children to be successful in this state. That's the big difference between the two of us, and that's critical.